Hey guys, hope you're well. So this lesson is all about longitudinal waves. So we've just finished looking at transverse waves, transverse waves. And remember that's the one where um, that's the one where the particles move perpendicularly to direction of wave. And so here was the simulation that we've looked at in previous lessons. So for example, if you have to have a look at this particle over here, I want you to, I'm gonna push, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit now. I just want you to watch that particle. Okay, so have a look what it does. You see how that particle is just going up and then look what it does now. And then it goes down. But if I had to show you the wave you would think that the wave is going to the right. Can you see that? Well, the wave is going to the right. So the wave is going like this. We can see it's moving to the right, okay? But the particles are just going up and down, and that's what we called transverse. This is transverse. But now in this lesson, we're gonna be looking at longitudinal, which is a totally different type of wave. So here we're gonna look at a longitudinal wave. Now I'm gonna let this wave go and I want you to try to see in which direction the wave is going, okay? So if you just look at this, I know it looks really weird, right? But this is a longitudinal wave. Now, can you see, we can see things are moving all over the place, but can you see that it looks like the general direction is that this wave is moving to the right-hand side. I mean, just look at this black bar over here. Now it's over here. Now it's over here, and now it's over here. So it looks like the wave is going to the right, okay? You can see everything seems to be going to the right. So we can just say here, um, wave is going to the right. Now we're gonna look at each of the particles. So I want you to specifically focus on this red one. Look at that red one, okay? And just keep following the red one. What is that red one doing? Is it going to the right? or well, there it's going to the right, now it's going to the left, now it's going to the right, and so it doesn't seem to be moving out of its position. So for example, it didn't go further than that, and it didn't go further than that. Let's see if it ever goes beyond those two points. It never does. And so what we can see though, is that the particles are moving to the right, and then they're moving to the left. You can also look at this green one if you want to. Um, the furthest position on the right is over there, and the furthest position that it reaches on the left is over there. Now let's see if it ever goes outside of that. No, it never does. So this is what makes trans, I mean, this is what makes, so this is what makes longitudinal different to transverse. Because what we have now is a wave that's moving to the right, and the particles are moving in the same type of direction. They're not moving at 90 degrees. And so when you have a longitudinal wave is when the particles move parallel, parallel to the wave, okay? Now, so there's some interesting things we need to talk about. All right, so let's, let's talk about a few things. This area here, and here, and there, and there. You see where all the lines are really squashed together, or they're very close together? Well, that area is called a compression, because all the particles are compressed together. Then there are areas where the particles are really wide, and that would be like this area over here. Where they are very wide is called a Rare faction, very weird word. So the compression is um, the place where the particles are close, and then um, a, a rare faction is the place where the particles are far apart. Okay, now, if you go connect any compression to another compression, so for example, that to that, that is gonna be a wavelength, okay? That would be one wavelength. You could also go and connect a part where it's really spread out, so for example, there, all the way to another part that's spread out, and that would also be 
a wavelength. And it would be the same wavelength whether you looked at this one or whether you looked at that one. And then the last thing I want to talk about with longitudinal waves is that all of the wave formulas that we've used with transverse are also applicable here. So you could use formulas like um, the distance, speed, time formulas. They will work. So you know the distance, speed triangle that we use. You could also use the normal uh, wave equation, which is using frequency and lambda. You could also use um, period is equal to 1 over frequency. Frequency is equal to 1 over period. And then also the definitions of period, such as um, number of seconds per wave. And then frequency is number of waves. So it's a waves over there, divided by number of seconds. All of those formulas can also be used when looking at longitudinal waves.